for the last three games of the day. Ender, you've already had the privilege of casting on this very unique setup. Uh, but now we get to go into one of my favorite games of the day. A game we get to cast together because everything is on the line for XL. And for Fnatic, I want to see what form they're going to be in today. Look, Fnatic, they they play weird stuff. Like, there's no doubt about that, right? You know, Blippo's played like a million different champions in the top lane. You heard the desk talking about the pocket Vagar picks and everything. We've even seen Zach support. But coming to this game, I have to say there is a worrying trend for the side of Fnatic. I did some digging. Look at this. Uh, uh, let me list off like a, a couple champions that Blippo has played in the top lane. He's played Rengar, he's played Swain, he's played Urgot, he's played Sin. But in his last four games, this is, this is what he's played. GP set, GP set. Like, what is happening, Dracos? Is he a slave to the meta now, Ender? Is that what you're He has to, to be. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Dead. But what I'll tell you is I also saw a little bit of Graves talk coming through Ooh. a few days ago. Now, everyone's been playing a lot more solo queue with recent circumstances, so maybe that's just a solo queue special. But we're going to have to find out as we get into the thick of picks and bands. Of course, Excel coming in at 7-7. Seven and seven. Fnatic coming in at 10-4. and four. Already we have the Rakan, the Misfortune, the Senna band away. I don't think we're going to see any more farming Senna today. Yeah, we might not see any AD carries today either because both teams seem to be banning a whole lot of those away here, you know. It's no surprise usually when Reckless loads into games, you know, he'll he'll get some bans thrown his way, but already we're seeing Fnatic actually taking two of these off the table. The Senna makes a lot of sense to me, right? I don't think Reckless necessarily wants to try his hand at that, hasn't been a huge fan of that at all this split, but the Aphelios is one that he has loved to play a lot, and taking that away opens up some interesting options, like could it be the Kai'Sa that he played against G2 sort of returning into that ball? Lane? Now also the second to be banned away has been limiting some of the picks that Blippo has kind of been making a name for himself more than he does normally. Kalista interestingly going to be the final ban. Now we've seen this a ton in top lane and solo queue, not as much anywhere else. Probably just a bot lane fit for Reckless, but the amount of AD carry attention, Ender, you already said it. No one's going to get to play anything top tier this game. We're yeah, going deep, deep into the pocket. And Excel, <laughs> when they hover the Yumi, it makes me think they already know they want that Yumi as real. It's so strange too, right? Because you leave the Ornn open. The Gragas is another pick that both of these teams have loved. Like, I would be uh, like... Uh perplexed if Selfmade didn't lock in the Gragas here unless he had something super specific that he wanted uh, had in mind to like run in, inside of this game but it feels to me like Fnatic are sort of reading the situation thinking yes the Orn gets left open we get to take the Gragas and then there's some sort of pocket pick that Whippo has up his sleeve ready to lock into this one. And I want to see how deep the champion move goes, how crazy he's been getting because we, we talk a lot about patch 10.5 but this is essentially a one week patch now. We get to go into 10.6, the Wukong nightmare that everyone's experiencing at home. So the special sauce that we get in 10.5, one week experience, incredibly unique. And how deep does it go? Gragas, as you said, pretty easy lock in. Pantheon not banned with all these easy carries Ooh. taken away. So it feels like an easy pickup for Fnatic, and that is technically a flex pick. Could go mid lane, could go top lane. I, I, I think Whippa wants this one. When, when, he, when we had him on PGL a few weeks ago, he was talking about how like his favorite champion of the game is Pantheon, and he loves it, and didn't even know why he hadn't played it sooner. So I like this in his hands, especially because Fnatic love to run these plays where Whippa just pieces out a top lane. You know, the early TPs in the bot lane, post level six, see him reset and then look for an ult into bot or into mid lane. There are a lot of really good options for a champion uh, like Pantheon in the hands of Whippa. Especially love because we have two champions that can get aggressive that can make plays already in the draft. We don't have the GP he wants, you know, obviously Flippo's gonna play aggressive, but mostly it's gonna sit back. Excel, on the other hand, clearly just wanna survive this game. And that's what I'm seeing so far. When you pick him up with the Carthus, the early game Orn, it says, just hold on, just survive. Late game's gonna come eventually, we'll make it through. But now if they walk in the Renekton, it's gonna be a very different story. We saw expect pilot this one uh, in our last week of competitive play, and it looked damn good. Right, you know, I, I was thinking, yeah, I guess Excel are going the scaling route, but I don't think that's a great choice when you're a weaker team playing against Fnatic, because Fnatic will just absolutely smash you early and not give you room to come back in. So uh, I'm actually more of a fan of this pivot into the Renekton here, uh, more than likely to try and follow this Pantheon wherever he decides to go, if it was the top lane or into the mid lane. And then you have this Karthus too, which while yes, it gives you great scaling options, I think is going to be really, really powerful and go unpunished up against a Gragas in the jungle. Yeah, I have to see exactly what Kato can get done. Another, another champion, he's been practicing a lot in solo queue. That, I mean, it's mostly a farming simulator in solo queue. I feel like it's a lot more high pressure in pro games, what you're giving up just to power farm the call. Generally, I love this pick for Nemesis. 
I'm glad we're not seeing the Vygon. I know it's the special sauce. I know she loves to pull it out. But I think this champion can be so dominant in the and the Renekton and the Dewarn. Yeah, and something that Nemesis likes to do on the Cassiopeia 2 is actually go side lanes later on, where you don't see a lot of players on this champion necessarily do that, but almost no one can beat him 1v1, and when you have a team that is willing to play around you and give you vision so you can't get ganked, because that's really going to be Cassiopeia's weakness when she does go side later on, like, Nemesis is going to be super, super powerful and virtually unbeatable in isolated 1v1 combat. Now the question is, what are the second phase bands going now it's the Ezreal, it's the Tom Kench, the Nautilus. It's actually just so much bot lane focus. Of course, with the champions already locked in, it makes sense. There's no really... I thought Excel maybe would focus bands on the bottom side. I didn't think we'd see the same thing from Fnatic. And now we're going to be digging really, really deep just to find, honestly, anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost wondering, like, we saw a very early Gragas pick here for Fnatic. They always have the option to go for these late flexes. You know, we've seen Graga support in the past. Well, I don't necessarily expect that to be the option here with the champion like the Thresh open. I think that would be a great lock in here for Fnatic. It is one of the strengths of Fnatic drafts because they've shown that they can flex so many different champions between multiple positions. We've seen it like with the Zac in the past, right? So uh, I do always feel some sense of like uncertainty when you do enter the second phase whenever Fnatic's on the now we see the fresh picked up for Hillisang, and surprising to see him get something that he's so comfortable on this late in the draft, but Kaisa does feel like the last remaining pseudo high priority pick, probably, or definitely not S tier, but A tier. Draven, something we've seen from Patrick before, but definitely not what I would expect. This spell a very aggressive bottom side of the map, and we've got double TP already picked up on the side of the cell. It could mean we have a party in the bot lane, Ender. Oh, wait, do they lock in the Blitzcrank next to it? Because that would be absolutely wild. All of a sudden, you give yourselves a very clear area of the map to play against. We saw Blitzcrank locked into Thresh a lot, especially on the world stage, where you can just, you know, pull him straight back on in there whenever he goes for a hook. There's, there's a lot of easy punishes right there, assuming you are landing your skill shots. And, you know, given XL's uh, engage tools already, where you have an Orn as well, you, you have... The setup now to have a pretty strong backline with the Karthus and the Draven, the engaged tools as well, and the ability to play through bot lane, which is something that analysts have been asking Excel to do for weeks now. Okay, but to be fair, no one said do it against Fnatic, and this is where <laughs> I get scared, because this is the double TP bot team. This is what they did for an entire year with Broxa on the lineup to find those wins. And now you've got the Draven, you've got the Blitzcrank, you've got all the tools to win a execute against a team like Fnatic that's it you don't get second chances yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult for them for sure you cannot make mistakes against Fnatic especially when your your playoff line life is on the line you know we've seen other teams slightly above Excel already falter in the standing state with Misfits dropping down but every single game Excel have to come in into and they have to find some kind of an upset this week they have Fnatic today G2 tomorrow if they want a chance at playoffs they're gonna have to upset someone yeah, and as you said, with the Misfits loss, it's no longer a pipe dream. It's very much possible. It's in reality, especially if top teams keep losing to bottom teams. So if Excel can find a win here, that's going to be everything. That's going to be massive because their schedule is brutal. Their schedule is miserable. They play every single top team. But if they can find a win here by shutting down Fnatic's bot lane, it's going to be big for confidence and it's going to be huge for the standings. And putting so much faith into Patrick as well. On this Draven, the signature pick, you know, we've seen him play it in the past, back in the name of Sheriff. And uh, a lot of resources going into him in this game up against Reckless. This is going to be a, a really pivotal matchup. You look around the map, it is the Patrick show we are going to be waiting for. And something a lot of fans have been waiting to see as well. And something that, in general, I just think is, is the bet, one of the biggest strengths of Excel is how solid Patrick and Torre have been for this team. They were both kind of diamonds in the rough last year, I think, if you want to say, when Torre was Norse. And now, just generally, things seem to be working out fine for the team, but want to see more. 
You definitely do. And that's where you start asking the questions coming in towards playoffs. Of course, there's a big environment shift here for these teams. So this is the first time we're seeing all of these teams after, you know, the week uh, break we took last week, you know, sort of unexpected there. But this is a chance to sort of reset yourself going back in towards these final weeks and to try and, you know, come in no strings attached. Right. Uh, you know, I think Vettius was talking about it earlier in the day. The desk maybe was as well, where it's a scrim environment. You know, you're playing at home you know do we see the xl you know scrim god you know we, we hear the rumors about mickey popping off in scrims is this the day we get to see you know some sort of consistency come out of him on the stage as well? okay but to be fair he's playing orn today too you <laughs> know, so like if there was a pop-off day it was probably on the renekton mid maybe we, we wait for the pop-off day maybe this is the safe reserved mickey day that's all i'm saying but the thing or that I love, he could ooh. pop off on the orn <laughs> I mean, that'd make LS happy, but come on, man. No, no one else is like keen on the Orn pop off uh, performance. Gambit and already Excel are losing. How does this happen already? I, what's going on? I was, I was about to come into this game and be like, look, you don't want to play around bot lane early because the TPs are going to come in. But then Fnatic just hit you with the classic level one, and now Torrey's down a life. That's going to be first blood going into Hillisang, so it's not going to be the end of the world. It's not like Reckless rolls into lane with an extra, you know, long sword or something. But still, not the start that Excel were looking for. And really, when you fall behind Blitzcrank Draven Lane, like you're gonna get more opportunities to come back. But Reckless wasn't really gonna be able to play the lane, especially against an exhaust Draven. The dark technology, the G2 themselves have <laughs> honestly plagued probably every lane with. We saw it in houses when five people took exhaust. Now we can see it in the bot lane when a Draven just runs down a Kais with exhaust. It's gonna be difficult. For yeah, I actually, that kill going. I especially like the exhaust pick here uh, on a Draven in particular because, like, you already know that guy's gonna be hard to to beat down, even if you are. Are one of the big damage dealers for Fnatic later on, right? Like in any kind of 1v1, like Pantheon would love to jump on that dude, but now that he's gotten exhaust, like there's no way you're gonna ever beat this guy. Yeah, especially when he has stand aside to interrupt the jump as well. So things don't get easier. But now another pause coming through. Uh, we'll keep you guys updated on what exactly is going wrong here. It's interesting though, Ender, when we look at this game, I gotta say that's like the worst possible start for XL, but I'm, I still am not counting them out, right? Like despite first blooding on their bottom side that, you know, probably should have dominated i'm not that i'm still i'm still not worried because i just i feel like blitzcrank is such a coin flip champion but you get a flip so many coins Ender. every 20 so seconds as long as you have mana you have a chance to just win the game and but i but here's I the that. thing like that's that's great dracos don't get me wrong but they are playing against the master of flippers himself in hillisang on the other side so if there's any player that knows how to play against the flip it's got to be him but what is the strategy then? Does Hillisang just say, we're not going to flip the coin. I'm just going to flash in front of this hook and we're going to go. Like, is that, is that the, I is think Hillisang goes play? for the flays. He goes for the flays because those are pretty much guaranteed unless you send them the wrong way. And if you send them the wrong way, then uh, there, there's bigger problems. So we're we're all in there. there. Many historic moments from many different supports. Shout out to our boy Yellowstar back in the day. It's, it's an easy ability to fumble in moments of high pressure. <laughs> Ender, 10-5 is, is a bit weird to me as a okay. patch because like a lot changed right and i don't think we're gonna get to see a lot of the things that i was most excited about because the blade of the rune king buffs made every single champion feel so oppressive and while there is a renekton on the top side i can't imagine the renekton or the pantheon are gonna bust it out which makes me sad because i liked the aurelius i liked the solo q spice that was coming out and it just hasn't been there yet in the games today yeah maybe we'll have to wait for it a little bit later on it's also one of those things where like you're going to see it a lot, especially when it's like a bruiser or fighter matching up into a tank. And because we don't have any of those direct matchups going on, uh, at least in this game, it's something you're probably not going to see a whole lot of. The other thing that I think is weird about 10.5, and it's not just like the changes that happened on it. It's that technically this is the first day we're seeing LEC players like in the LEC playing on this patch. But we're all on 10-6 now. So it's like we're seeing it for the first time, but we're already moving past it. It's a really interesting dynamic because usually you have that like buffer week in between where you like you see what teams have their first initial read on it in week one. And then week two, they make some slight adjustments. But now it's just like we're on 10-5, you know, and then we're going to peace out to the next patch like very, very quickly. 
Ten six is the one that gets me excited though, because we're getting closer and closer to fiddle six rework, and all I really want to see is fiddle six be competitively viable. <laughs> the first legitimately creepy champion we've ever made. Everyone else that has like a horror theme, you're like, eh, all right. So like, here's the here's the deal with Fiddlestick. Love the theme, love everything. I've I got the chance to play it. Like this is like a few months ago. Don't get me wrong. Um, back when I was in LA, but I I don't think he's going to be a super competitively viable champion. Like at his core, he's still like the same like fundamental champion in a lot of what he does. I think he got a lot of really cool things that he uh you know can do now with the passive and little scarecrows. He can drop down all that. Um, the big power with the ultimate is like getting that AOE fear. Uh, coming out of the fog of war, but I would be very surprised to see him catch on in pro play unless he was like pretty overtuned on release. Which, to be <laughs> fair, and <laughs> if history and or Wukong changes are any indication, he might be. I don't think it's, it's possible. Wukong already hotfixed, folks. It's possible. The the other thing that I really I want to see is if we now on ten five and this will transition into ten six, but the buff to Kaisa or the changes to Kaisa to make her AD or AP builds a little bit more focused. We've seen a ton. You of mean how she got nerfed on ARAM? Yeah. Okay. She got. Wait, <laughs> whatever. Fine. Don't don't bring up your, your side hobbies into our highly professional. League okay. League. Fine. It was a hot fix nerf. The actual buffs definitely buffed her on it. Anyways, continue your point though. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm just curious to see if we see more AP Kaisa. Uh, with more conventional build because the ap build obviously in the void seeker is ludicrously strong but is a bit if you miss the w in a fight you like instantly lose the fight that's a large majority of your damage but inversely the ad with the extra rockets on the evolve q the akathian rain is so so gross so absolutely disgusting in 1v1s. Yeah, when you can just put 12 missiles on one person if they don't have a minion wave to soak up any of them. They're like, wait, my, my full HP bar, and it's all gone. Oh, no. We're back to pure assassin Kaisa status, which I think is the nightmare scenario for any more squishy, potentially vulnerable champions. I mean, like, to be you... fair, assassin Kaisa is, like, the coolest Kaisa. Like, not, not when she's just, like, 1v1s you in a side lane without doing anything, but, like, when she dives into the back line in the middle of a team fight and just nukes your carry, like, that's, that is to me what, like, Kaisa should be in, like, her high moments, not just the pew pew, hit your front line, melt you down. Yeah. You yeah, know? it definitely feels like budget vain when she's not, like, using alt to reposition in a fight. You're just slowly walking backwards with E, invisible for a second, <laughs> auto-attacking. Yeah, I agree. And to be, and my dream here, and bear with me, Ender, I'm a, I'm a bit of a brewer when it comes to theoretical interactions. This one's okay. quite simple. We'll call this a tier one interaction. You Kaisa alt into the Karthus, you one-shot him, great start to a fight. Hill is saying, lanterns you back out as you're reckless, bada bing, bada boom, you won the fight. I Ooh, think that's pretty good. That is sweet. If lantern had 4,000 range. <laughs> Which... As you might know, it doesn't. So <laughs> what I, this is your mission, should you choose to accept it, Color Caster, is find a situation where this could be viable. All right, so here's how you do it. You drop the lantern down. You flash over the Baron wall. You hit the blast cone over yet another wall. There's your 4,000 range. And you're also taking Ghost and Predator because that's what Thresh does. All right, bad news. He'll is saying to not take <laughs> Ghost or Predator. So What is he pretty, thinking? I know. <laughs> Not a fan of my interactions. That's fine. Um, for anyone wondering, we're still in a pause situation. Uh, comms issues, I believe, for both sides. We are getting those resolved quickly. Obviously important to be able to talk in game. Also important for our rest to be able to hear competitive integrity and all that jazz. Keeping it together here on the LEC Break Podcast. Brought to you by KitKat. It's uh, Dracos and Ender. <laughs> Speaking of being able to communicate with each other, so I was I was in the pregame lobby before this one, and mm -hmm. expect rolls in, and he and he's like he's typing in Korean, right? So I'm like, okay, I highlight all his messages and I put them into Google Translate, and he's just listing out all of his teammates' names like very clearly. Um, but when you put in Cadrel or the line that should be Cadrel, it comes out Cathedral. <laughs> Which I think is great. And if you guys don't know, Yamato Cannon calls Cadrel Cathedral all the time. And I think it's well, amazing. So also, there you go. to be fair, if you're Excel, you're praying every game that he's coming to your lane. He's the, <laughs> he's the only way you're coming out. Especially, you got the Orn lane. You got the Renekton Pantheon lane. That lane's over with a single gank for one side or the other. So at this point, look at him like a cathedral. Pray a little bit. Maybe he comes to your lane. Maybe he gives you attention. Because, I don't know. After, after the Maokai GP lane, like... Top lane is so weird to me now. I don't know what to expect. And I just think just snowball someone on the top side of the map. I don't care which team does it. Just someone should. Because watching 
Odo just be incredibly obnoxious on Maokai made me realize how much I missed having tanks on the meta and how glad I am that I do not play top lane when tanks are in the meta. <laughs> Dude, you're just glad you don't play top lane, period. I, I don't care if it's tanks or, or fighters. Like, I, but that, I, that's I can't I'm play that. That's because I'm bad. I can't win a 1v1. That's why I play bot lane. I'm no, no, less... but it's because you want to have impact on the game that you don't play uh, top yeah, lane. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, who cares about the one people? Like, top laners are, are a different breed of people, right? Like, they're the people... Uh, what, what's, a, what's a good way to describe them? Like, the whole... Like, someone's house could be burning down, right? But as long as as long as they, like, win the one... Like, they're fine, you know? That, that was a terrible analogy. I was trying to go somewhere with it. <laughs> if they good. could... If they could use water to put out the fire on their bed, but the rest of the fire burns down, they're happy. That's the type of player a top player. They, they've been social isolating for as long as they've been playing. <laughs> you know, they're not oh, interested no. in team games. They're not interested in sticking together. That's 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 the top laner MO. Ender, should we talk about stakes? We're, no. in a weird, we're in a weird spot. Like, there's 10-5 to talk about. We could talk well, about... Well, like, it is uh, dinner time, so I could go for some. What did you eat? What was I had some dinner? chicken nuggies for dinner. Gone. Chicken nuggies Why and potato wedges. That? oh that's just what you call them. No. That's what pe that's how people on the internet call them, you know? No, dude, no. <laughs> no? It's fine. You asked. Look, what did you think the answer was gonna be? I, I just what, what do you call them? Chicken nuggets, dude. What what why would you need why would you shorten that? How how much why Andrew? because it saves you time how much of your vernacular comes from tiktok that's my question okay actually a lot though and like <laughs> okay real talk a lot also all my music choices like i recognize so many songs nowadays just because i've heard them on tiktok before like i would have never listened to this music before mm -hmm. had tiktok not existed and i used well, to i used to hear all these pop songs on the radio because when i lived in la i had an old car that i couldn't put my phone in to listen to music so i just listened to the radio so i know all the pop songs last year i didn't know any pop songs because i was chilling here but this year i've got tiktok and i know everything <laughs> i'm so proud of you it, I, you know honestly i was like I'm not a big fan of the platform, but if it broadened your musical horizons away from just Taylor Swift or Billie Eilish at all Whoa. times, I'm, I'm happy for you. No, it's fine. It's good music. It's just like, come on, man. Live a little. <laughs> Get some DMX in there. You know, have have a good time. DMX? Is that like a motorbike or something? What is yeah, that? Yeah. Hon honestly, sure. Why not, dude? It's the X going to give it to you song. I know you know that one. <laughs> Come on. I do know that one. I do know that one. The best, though, is when Mi Miyu Yamato went to a, a comedy uh, uh, oh, no. performance, and there was some, like, guy from, like, the 2000s who did a musical bit at the end, and you and Yamato are just, like, losing your minds. I still don't know who the guy was. Dude. Okay, well, I was, one, really concerned, because when you started referencing a Dave Chappelle show that we went to, <laughs> that I could get very inappropriate very fast, but thank you for keeping that whole It was most deaf for any hip-hop fans. Most deaf, for most sure, bro. Deaf. No, man. Most deaf came on stage. Yeah, totally. And then there's like, oh, cool. There's a guy on stage <laughs> rapping. I don't know who this guy is. Fine. I was like, it was like good music. I was vibing, you know? It was all, all right. right. I think we've hit our allotted quota of random off topic nonsense. Um, okay. Pull me back. So I'm going to bring, bring you back into some stakes. So coming into today, I was really thinking that this game would be sort of make or break for both Rogue or Misfits. Because essentially at this point, if Rogue or any combination of two XL losses and two Rogue or Misfits wins, right, locks both Rogue and Misfits in the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. So sounds good, sounds good. But I never thought that Schalke were going to win. Um, was not on the coins or in the cards for me. Did not think that To at be all. fair, no one did. <laughs> no, now it's kind of ruined my stakes because this could have been the game that locked uh, Misfits in the playoffs. I could have been like, oh, Misfits, you know, hoping, sitting back, waiting. They need Excel to win this or Excel to lose this game so they can get in the playoffs. They can lock that spot. And now I don't really know. Now it's like the same stakes just kind of delayed. Like they need Excel to <laughs> lose this game and then, then, then they also need to win tomorrow. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, Thanks. if you look at if you look at the standings right now, right? Like you have Excel currently with seven wins, and then you have Rogue, Mad Lions, and Misfits all with nine wins. Rogue have a game left to play today, but it's against G two. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's like fairly likely that they're going to have nine wins continued at the end of the day. So if Excel were to win this game, they'd be one game down. That sounds great for Excel fans. The bad news is 
Excel lost both games they played against Rogue. They lost both games they played against Misfits. Uh, but the good news is they won both the games they played against Mad Lions. So, like, yes, they're going to be one game down from Rogue and uh, from Misfits. But the real battle, I think, for sixth place, assuming that, you know, Rogue and Misfits don't completely tank towards the end of the season, is going to be between, going to be between Excel or Mad. And it's really especially intense um, because a lot of this kind of a lot of these battles i think uh hinge very highly on mad lions performance on the day right as you know but one of the things that really stood out to me is from talking to g2 players specifically about mad, mad lions they're like yeah these guys are geniuses they're so good or they're terrible <laughs> and, and like that that is that makes all of these games so incredibly high stakes because if you told me uh misfits versus mad lions like who do i expect to win i think the safe bet would have been misfits but hearing that seeing misfits today i'm like Mad Lions can do it, man. Mad Lions can strike back. They can get something done there, and that's that's huge for the standings. Yeah, I mean, it's it's why a team like Mad Lions can get these upsets, but it's also why I think a lot of analysts like have reservations about them too, right? Because this team, you know, there is a fair amount of inconsistency on the roster. Like, you, you pull out, like, any sort of player in isolation, and, like, people are going to have a lot of good things to say about them. But then they're like, oh, you load them all onto the rift. Like, what if they're all not having great games? Well, then, you know, the, the pieces start to crumble just a little bit. So that's why this race does feel like it is still very much in the run for both Matt and Excel. Do you think the Trundle pick that we saw today, do you think that's like real spicy special tech? Because I'm un, I'm un, I'm uncertain <laughs> because it was played in a game versus SK, right? And SK yeah. obviously very low down the standards. So why burn your your secret sauce, right? Like why use that there? I'm wondering if it's a bait. If they're just trying to fish for a Trundle ban. See, I would be really surprised to see a Trundle ban against them. And that's why I'm like, I don't know if it's necessarily a bait. It's more of probably like, oh, we've probably scrimmed with this. Can we try it, you know, in, in a quote unquote real game, right? Um, so it was an interesting one for me that I think worked out pretty well. And I'm curious to see if we see any more of it. Well, I'm curious as well. For now, we are going to toss over to the analyst desk. Apologies again for the delay. I'm sure we'll get more context there. We'll be back shortly. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we will, of course, give you updates whenever we get them in as well. But that does give us a chance to vamp a little bit here on our online desk. It's always weird. I mean, when we're in the studio, we don't have a desk ending and now nobody can see the desk. So philosophically, I'm struggling with the whole situation, I got to say. Um, but what I do know is that we can talk about the game. We're just, we're just chilling here, Sean, so just <laughs> hanging out. Uh, yeah, we can talk about the game in terms of uh, the draft that's come in. Um, I think I missed the initial first blood. I think there was a skirmish that happened early. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, same for me. But uh, the draft, I, I would think that you had some some question marks, probably for the Fnatic side. I actually thought that, okay, so here's my tinfoil hat. I'm putting it on. I felt like there was a plan that Fnatic had something spicy with the draft in terms of either flexing a Casio or a Pantheon, perhaps even into the bottom lane. But it felt like uh, Fnatic bailed kind of halfway through it as soon as they saw the Draven, uh, Draven and the Blitzcrank come out. The fact that they saved the, you know, ADC Kaisa reveal pick for so long. So as I was watching kind of what was happening with Fnatic's draft, I was like, okay, that could be Reckless's Casio. That could be maybe a super special pick coming out for Nemesis in the mid lane. I know that Nemesis is very well known for his Casio and he's an amazing player. Um, but that's kind of what it felt like just watching it uh, tangentially. I think uh, the key thing is that uh, Excel kind of unorthodoxly with all of these AD carry bands, they went all out picking top mid jungle first three, allowing Fnatic to easily just lock in, knowing that uh, most likely Orn is going to go mid, Cassio's good champion into it. You have Pryo, you get to have some mobility early on, you get to impact the map, Orn gets to scale, of course, and then later down the line, I think Excel just kind of showed the fact that they can lock in Draven into a player like Reckless, because of course he's not going to play a Caitlyn. He's most likely not going to play like an Ash, because these are the champions that are usually good into Draven. So it just makes for an exciting matchup. And always, always with Draven and champions like this, is the whole early game becomes about Draven, because the moment there is some impact in the bot lane and Draven goes 0 1 or 1 0, it kind of changes the whole flow of the game. And it's kind of, I, I like the suit for Excel because they need to show us something explosive, but at the same time, Fnatic is so good at impacting bot lane, so it just makes up for an exciting matchup. 
Yeah, but I have a lot of uh, questions about kind of how they play around the Draven. Because I agree, like Draven Blitz, you obviously just want to sit and camp that lane or give it resources. Um, obviously with Kadrill on something like a Karthus, Karthus does have gank access and has decent skirmish access, especially in 1v1 scenarios just because of the damage on his Skittles. Um, but usually Karthus, if he does gank, gangs around level 4 when he gets access to Wall of Pain and he can like rock up into those lanes, throw down slows. It's not like you can get a uh, wave prio on Orn. Like Orn can get wave priority pretty easily but um at least when fanatic play orn they max e as opposed to maxing the w or the q that you'll sometimes see in solo queue depending on matchup and if this orn goes for an e max to try to compete with wave clear he has to put himself he kind of does the combo like galio where he kind of like cues through the wave and then he walks and then he e's back towards his tower like how galio would falcon punch and that just allows cassio to just walk you down with poison so i'm trying to think of like who actually gets down there for the draven and the blitzcrank if they don't just want to try to force the 2v2 like if they actually really want to hard uh hard pressure this lane and i think it actually has to be through the uh the potential next and i think i don't know i think excel will try to attack somewhere else, but otherwise I think it's just Draven and Blitzcrank trying to crack Reckless and Hilly. I don't know if they have the experience necessary uh, on those guys playing weak side. Oh, that's, um, I mean, there's a lot to think about, clearly. Uh, unfortunately, the game is still paused. Hopefully we'll get into it uh, pretty soon. I do have an update in that Excel is swapping out one of the PCs of the players right now. Hopefully that shouldn't take that long. It's obviously a new situation for, for everyone, but we will see. Uh, Yamato, what do you have to say um, to the draft and to, to the game plan from either side after Indiana's points? I think the key thing is the, the globals. Like, Carter's ult is going to impact bottom. If Orn is going to be able to have the space to walk down bottom, it's going to be amazing. And at the same time, Fnatic side, they have the Pantheon, the Gragas. They can easily, easily create a snowball onto the Renekton early on. Sure, Carter's pathing, we saw in the game that he's starting from bottom side, going into top side. This is going to matter. It's all about how those globals end up into bottom. Because I see bottom like Rome and all roads lead to Rome. <laughs> That's a good point, and I think when we, whenever we watch a Fnatic game, we know that a lot goes on around that bottom lane as well. Um, I am getting the cue that we are very close to the teams being ready once again. So with that, let's get back to our casters, and please, Ender, stop talking about TikTok. Thank you. Wow, not cool, Shocks, but thanks. We're back into the game. So rude. All right, Dracos, talk to me. Where are you at? All right, it's going to be Ender Solo cast from now on. Good news. Good news, people in chat. Weird champs only. We're going to be waiting to get back into the game as soon as possible. What? No. We just, okay. We had like a good 15 seconds, guys. It was a good run, but not enough, unfortunately. Yeah, no more weird champs. Give me Monka Hums. That's all I want. I want Monka mm, Hums and nothing else. I see. I see. Well, as we heard from the fantastic breakdown on the analyst desk, um, I mean, bot lane center of attention. We talked about it a little bit, but that's really the only thing I want to see is what's the accuracy rating on Torre hooks? Like, how clean is the Torre that we see today? Because if there's one thing that I know this man for, it's engaging well. We've seen it since the Rock Hat days forever ago when he was still Nor in this Norse gear. And how clean are the hooks going to be? Can he just drag Reckless right into the middle of the team once or twice and win a game? And can he avoid the lantern from Hill saying too? Because that's the one thing you have to think about with Blitzcrank hooks. You need to be able to chain that CC for Thresh can just lantern you on out of there. Hopefully we'll be able to get back into this one as soon as possible. It feels like, you know, we, we had that first blood so long ago, Dracos, right? Tori went down. But, I mean, like, as a reminder, the gold all went on to Hillisang. So, like, bot lane's still pretty fine. Like, it's not going to swing the matchup too terribly much for these so, two guys. But, To yeah. be fair, Ender. Yes. There's a window of opportunity here. Because oh. when we look at the scoreboard in game, right? What we can see is that Hillisang has spent no money. Ooh. Which means that that kill gold is effectively worthless. But you know what else Hillisang has done? He's used Ignite. Which means Torre has Ignite advantage as well as even gold for the start of the game. Because he was smart enough not to use a pot in that exchange. So really, super big brain getting caught if he goes for the all-in in the next eh, two minutes. I mean, Dragos, that's like a fair point. When when I thought you when you brought up window of opportunity, I thought you were saying we could make like a pizza run before this pause finished. But I guess we have different priorities. No, as we learned, you can't AFK during a pause <laughs> for even a second, or you get Ender Weird Champ Podcast dot com. You be, be vigilant. You think you got that was a great. Break? You're wrong. By the way, that website still exists. Um, so I would highly recommend recommend checking it out. 
See, this is perfect because I get to promote Euphoria and you get to promote Ender Weird Champ. It's yep. really the, the culmination of the two things that we both love oh so much. Honestly, um, the Weird Champ's gotten to a point where like, you know those companies that like don't advertise ever, but like everyone still talks about them all. Like that's sort of like yeah. where I'm at with the Weird Champs, you know? Like Hoover, right? Yeah. Like no, no one calls it a vacuum, at least in the UK or in the, sorry, in Europe as far as I know. They always say Hoover, right? That's a brand, dude. How deep in are you? That company owns that mind share. Brilliant. That's what we need to do. People don't think Ender. They just think Weird Champ. And you never need it's to say true. anything else. <laughs> Free rent in the minds of all Twitch chatters alike. I would like to uh, circle back to our original conversation around uh, chicken nuggets. My, my, mother, oh, uh, <laughs> my mother reached out to me and informed me that uh, chicken nuggets is indeed the correct pronunciation. So I'd like to say thanks, Mom. And uh, I will only refer to them as chicken nuggets from now on. I'd also there like to thank go. my grandparents that are also watching the stream right now. Thank, Hi. Thank you, Mrs. Ender, or Ms. Ender. How, what is, what is your mom? What's your last name? Mrs. Fry. Uh, Ender Mom. Ender Mom. Thank, Ender Mom. Ender Mom. Thank you. That, we'll give that a solid okay champ. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what you like. You'll love to see it. Yeah, this, is, this is just the tendies of a new era. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, just, I'm not with it. I never, I, I don't really get down old baiting himself for jokes. You know what I mean? He's just like, I'm old, I'm old, I'm old. But like in this one, between the most deaf thing and the tendies <laughs> thing or the nuggies thing, whatever it was, I'm, I'm in that camp now. It, Dude, there were, there were a lot of different things. Let me be clear on our podcast. So before you were so rudely interrupted by the analyst desk. Hmm. I'm trying to think about what other interesting podcast subjects that I would like, speci if I was specifically to invite, by you on a podcast, but what I talk about, I think it'd be ba champion balance, champ design, because you have experience there. Okay, I love that. Min maxing Karthus jungle clear routes, because those are the two things where you're like certifiably the most qualified person on our broadcast. That True. and TikTok, but no one wants to hear about TikTok. <laughs> so like, you can pick, you can pick. We can talk about balance and design, and I, I've got many questions for you. Yes, uh, balance design. Let's go. Hit me. All right. And keep in mind, people, we may be getting back into games shortly. Hopefully, we're working on it. Me and are in game. We get to see the all chat, uh, thrilling back and forth of people spamming the letter R for. Oh ready. no! I dragged it off my screen. I haven't read any of this. Wait, that's a story for the next. If there's another pause, we're gonna tell the story about how you don't have chat on one of your accounts. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Drake, okay, it's a really weird champion to me, right? Because like, when a, the Draven player is good, he feels ludicrously oppressive and horrendous, like just absolutely imbalanced. So I'm mm -hmm. curious, from your perspective. How how is Draven like as a balanced champion? Is it just that he has a skill cap, and then it's like only certain people are good at him, so he's fine? Uh, I think there's a lot going on. Like yes, there's certainly like a, a skill to him, um, and primarily like when you look at champions that play very differently to any other pick in their role, they're always going to have like higher mastery curves. It's basically like the first game like a 30% win rate, but by your 50th game, you probably have like a 56% win rate or something like that. And like the bigger the difference is between those two numbers is how you determine mastery curves. Basically because in between like every auto, you're trying to like pick up your axes. Like that's a little bit more complex and uh, alters how you kite a lot of your champions. So I think there is a bit of a learning curve with him. Um, but also, he's, like, intentionally designed as, like, one of the most snowball -y champions by default, right? Like, you get kills, you're able to cash in, and that looks really good. So, I would say he's one of our more, like, sharp champion designs, which is uh, another, like, designer term, which is basically, like, the difference between being, like, like really good or really terrible on champion, being like that, than it would be on, I don't know, let's say, uh, what's, what's a... Misfortune. Misfortune, very flat champion, whether like you're brand Here new is. or 200 Darius. games. Yeah, exactly. The, the simple stuff. All right. Well, thank you for that, Ender. Luckily, we no now problem. have League of Legends to take us through as well. You, you kind of lost me when we started getting into the vernacular of like a sharp champion. I'm like, oh my God, this is like one of those things where people have sat in a room for too long and just made up words and now it's overly <laughs> complicated. But hey, I, I it's it. important. It makes sense. You need to have terms for things. XL, though, for now. Bot lane, not going quite as much as, or as well as they wanted. You can see the early back for a second Doran's Blade into the back pocket of Patrick should give him an even greater advantage, in theory, 
in a lot of these trades, but not really pressing their advantage so far. And Reckless and Hillisang doing a fine job of surviving. I wonder when we actually see attention paid down to that bottom side. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting because, you know, you do have all the TPs in this game as well. So it could very quickly break out into some sort of a fight. That being said, this is a game where I don't think Fnatic really want to like all in towards the bottom side of the map. When you look at like just basic firepower in an all in fight, I think you're going to favor a Draven, especially on this itemization over that of the Kai'Sa. Now, that being said, Reckless is recalling on about a thousand gold right now, so he should be able to go back and, you know, get a little bit more bang for his buck than just an extra Dorian's blade. He has a pickaxe and the fairy charm now, um, so it should be much better. And a bit of an awkward up there from Tori, so close, about half a second off. And I like that we're seeing the pickaxe and not the immediate tier buy here, because, I mean, you're already in a difficult lane phase. Don't make it any harder on yourself by buying zero combat stats when you return to base, so... <laughs> Good heads up play will, of course, delay the, the Muromana power spike, but isn't super consequential. Obviously, isn't procced on a Cathian rain, unlike the uh, nightmarish PPE days, so not going to be the end of the world. Yeah, ooh, check this out. Teleport coming through from Nemesis, just trying to secure the Scuttle Crab. He wanted to TP back into lane, but also Reckless and Tori have both roamed up towards the middle lane, so we could see some action break out here, although with Cajal recalling and self-made topside, it should fizzle. Yeah, Reckless will back off and he is spotted. Now, this is something we usually see Reckless do on champions like Misfortune, a bit more movement speed. But I like that they're trying to do something when they're not comfortable approaching the wave against Patrick, that both sides are trying to roam, trying to get something somewhere else on the map because it's very easy to just let yourself be the person who's sitting under tower all lane phase when uh, Patrick wants to get aggressive. Yeah, and now like w with the pressure Selfmade has through mid and top lane, like Selfmade is inside the enemy jungle, doesn't have his smite up. So we'll end up seeding that one back towards Kadrel. But this is a situation where like, he would have loved to try and pick uh, or find level 6 before Kadrel and try to sneak in one quick gank before Kadrel can always be able to counter. Now Selfmade's going to have to walk out of the jungle. Doesn't really feel comfortable taking the 1v1 against Kadrel. Of course, isolated damage on the Skittles is going to make a very difficult lay waste, a very oppressive ability. But Whippo smashing in these trades on the top <laughs> side of the map. Fast Conqueror procs are making this pretty, uh, honestly, unlivable for Expect at this stage of the game. But now Mickey gonna be the one in trouble. Nemesis chasing down a bit more follow-up damage. Twin Fangs hitting hard, but are they gonna commit fully for the dive? Does not look like it. Don't want to risk it on the orange kill. Wow, ice in the veins of Mickey right there, holding on to the flash the entire time, even after getting interrupted mid-dash there by Selfmade, who, of course, was unable to tick over towards level 6. Even had he picked up the uh, Bromp Camp, he was uh, scuffling Cadrel over. Wouldn't have been enough, so it didn't end up making a difference there. But still, pressure for Nemesis is always going to be a big deal, especially on this Cassiopeia, because if you can sort of, like, hyper-farm up on this champion against, you know, three melee champions on the side of Excel, it's going to be really difficult to deal with Nemesis unless, you know, miracle hooks are coming through from Torre. Now I have to see how Nemesis is going to handle this situation because it is the Ignite for Mickey as well, picked up courtesy of the Summoner's Spellbook, but Nemesis remains unfazed and Hillisang is already on the way up. Mickey, how many lives is he going to have? A big gusto to not flash last time. And is it going to burn it this time either? Honestly, <laughs> Mickey's so patient on these summoner spells. Yeah, but continuing to lose HP. And this time he doesn't have the luxury of just teleporting back in the lane. He's just going to have to try and build some items here. It is the Negatron Cloak, so it's not like he can restore any HP like he would have been able to had it been uh, a couple of rubies right there. But uh, I, I think we're already seeing a, a very different game than Fnatic is normally used to playing. Like, usually their games are a bit more explosive early on. But after seeing the draft, especially with the Draven Blitz in bot side, I think this does make some amount of sense. And now the difficulty for them, I feel like, is going to be realizing that with Cajal having access to R, now when Selfmade would realistically like to start making plays, they have to be very aware of how low they are going into the play. Otherwise, that Requiem comes down again. Get nuked. Yeah, and also just the, the sheer threat of the Draven finding a kill because of that makes everything more difficult. Reckless is going to be very vulnerable in this lane. Even Hillisang, the Lantern Shield, not really enough to mitigate that Karthus ultimate. And Patrick with an uh, you know XP advantage for now. Self made though does take over to level six. You've got level six for Nemesis, level seven yeah. for Whippo. So we could have some plays across the map. Fnatic could try to fish for something bigger here if Whippo wants to roam out of this lane. Well, I think look at bot lane too because you have a TP coming in. Hillisang wants to go right. forward. 
play. The hook's gonna come through where it's gonna go. Patrick gonna get knocked back, doesn't even need it. Whippo gonna grab that kill. Excellent start for Fnatic. Yeah, really nice setup there. It was kind of apparent when you saw Hill saying posturing. He had access to the lantern the entire time, but with the TP coming through from Whippo, Excel are not able to react. And and Fnatic just play this beautifully because Nemesis had even walked up into the top lane to pick up that big wave. Now Whippo, instead of recalling and resetting top after de denying himself a wave effectively, just swap straight back up and towards mid lane. So they're never losing minions on the map, even when they teleport are teleporting around. And that's why they're sort of the, the experts of these early game TP plays, because they almost never sacrifice much of anything for them. And the incredible thing here too, as well, Ender, is that now that we have Cassio committed to the top side of the map, Pantheon gets to walk mid, and now he can ult to either side. Semi-global no longer a concern, because when he's playing through mid lane, he gets to ult to any lane he wants. So, once again, just fantastic map moving from Fnatic, grabbing the Ocean Drake for themselves as well. 1.3k up, only 10 minutes into the game. It's an excellent start. And so we shift our attention mid lane. Expect's gonna have to be careful here. Point and click the stun. The hook's gonna be the follow up. Pulled right back into this one. The box coming out too. Oh, Renek has gotta run for his life. The hook comes in for Blitzcrank. It's gonna be enough. The one for one traded back. And Patrick gonna grab that cash out. Yeah, well, Fnatic trying to speed things up. Excel needed to find a punch back, and they did. But here's the problem actually, top lane getting frisky. Nemesis has to size up as much as he can, but here comes the Karthus ultimate. Ulti coming out as well. He gets shut down before anything else can happen. Well played by Nemesis. Yeah, Mickey thought he could win the fight with the Requiem coming in, but with the uh, Ravenous Hunter, I think, on the Twin Fangs from Nemesis, he sustained through so much of the damage, landed the ult to stun, and everything worked out so, so well for them. Now, circling back all the way to the fight in the mid lane, Yes, Patrick got the kill, but remember, a minute before that, Fnatic had killed Patrick, so he lost 75% of his stacks and really wasn't able to cash in on much. Yeah, a bit of a sad state of things going on. Fnatic is able to find that kill. Now Nemesis has to play fancy footwork, and Cajal's getting a little bit embarrassed here in this 1v1. Is he going to connect to Skittle? Doesn't need it. <laughs> Auto attack! The death by a Karthus. First time we've ever seen that in League of Legends history, folks. Coming through here. <laughs> Just turn your E on and right click is the name of the game for Cadrill. Cassio can't build boost, but she can still dodge literally everything. Man, I feel for Nemesis in that situation. He was out playing it all, but you can't can't dodge right clicks. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna look back at that replay fondly, honestly. <laughs> it's that that's one of my favorites. That's definitely a little bit special. So As a Karthus connoisseur, I can say I've been there, Cadrill. I I feel for you. There's the Karthuses where they hit every Q and you feel like there's nothing you can do and it's a point and click ability, and there's the Karthuses who can't hit a Q and you wonder why anyone plays this champion. Cadrill, he had one of those why would anyone play these champions Look, kind of moments. Man, the great it's tactical, okay? They're zoning cues to get Nemesis to juke back into his E, okay? That's the strategy. Oh, okay, I see. So it's, so it's actually Big Brain. He's getting him in range for the auto attack. Exactly. Using his <laughs> highest damage ability to bait them into a false sense of security. I like it. Cadrill. <laughs> Galaxy Brain Player has now the flat pen as well from the Oblivion Orb. So in the future, those auto attacks might not do more damage, but those cues are going to be even more threatening. Look at that. Do you want to count the, the cues? One. Oh, One, he landed yes. that. Two. Okay, so pretty good hit ratio. This is three. This is four. We're not going to get a chance to talk about it, though, because Torre gets caught in, well, his own territory and gets knocked out. <laughs> that replay made Cadrill look like the most insane Karthus player I've ever seen. <laughs> That's called he landed 50%. Editing. That's when you get the montage. Now Whippo's looking for his own montage. Another kill picked up on Cadrill and Excel are getting dunked down across the map. But now they're going to look for some retribution. Expect dashing in. Is going to find the stun. Wants to dice right back out into Whippo. Mickey coming in on the backside. Uses that summoner spellbook exhaust. TP coming in as well. But Fnatic are definitely going to be winning the fight here. Mickey tries to run to safety, but his own pillar blocks him from dashing out. And that's going to be it. It's Blippo finding yet another fight here on the Pantheon, diving in with his ultimate. Honestly, just continues to do it. Five out of seven kills. We were joking, you know, it seems like an hour ago before this game started about top lane impact. But this man has been all over the map and absolutely terrorizing itself. Three, one, and two. So oppressive. Two, zero, four now for Reckless as well. And what looked like a uh, honestly pretty unplayable lane from my perspective has gone just fanatic. Yeah, this is the replay one more time. Self-made finds Torre from over the wall, lands the ultimate. Torre not flashing soon enough on that one with Reckless jumping in on the ultimate. But this is where things get a little bit different because you have this really deep ward here spotting out Cajal in his jungle. And that's where Whippo says, hey, we're just getting on in here. Absolutely frustrating to play against. And even with Excel trying to turn things around, you have to feel like it's...
it's a little bit desperation mode for them because they do get the one kill, but you know it's a 3v2 situation even after you do get that, so they're never going to be able to make it out of here, it didn't feel like, really. Eh, to me, it just felt like an instinct play, Ender. Like, they, they had people in the play, they were going to try to make things happen, but tori has been hooked again. Oh Someone's going to throw the cast back. The entire team is running over, but they might just feed a kill right into Patrick. Nope, Lantern going to deny that one, and Patrick left empty-handed once again. I'm telling you, Hill saying the master coin flipper knows exactly what to roll in here. He's heads every single time so far this game. Absolutely on point with the hooks. You'll love to see it. Someone had to be great at hooks. Truly a trap. <laughs> Everyone was going to miss all game long. To be fair, it's not Torres missing that's hurting Excel right now. True, true. Just Hillisang it's him getting hit. Accuracy rate. Yeah. The man can't miss. You wonder which Hillisang version of Hillisang you're going to get every time you step into a game of League of Legends if you're a Fanatic fan. Well, got the damn good one this time around. And interesting change we have Ender coming in on this patch specifically with the Moby's cost increase. Swifties just everywhere. Yeah, everyone loves those Swifties here. I think on the Blitzcrank it's especially fun because uh, I believe it does reduce the self-slow he gets on the W. So a little bit of bonus value out of that one while Torre recalling under his tower gets absolutely chain CC'd. Uh, not much you can do about that one, I'm afraid. No, when, you, when your buttons don't do anything when you push them, it's high, high likelihood that you had a non-interactive life there. And that's, that's what Torre's experience was. I think Tor is building a Mikhail's Crucible as well on the old Blitzcrank. <laughs> He's had enough. <laughs> it's cool. Like, look, if you're at home, we all know it's for Torre, but we can pretend. Oh, well, it's for someone else. Mickey's going to have to dash here, but solid input buffer on the Searing Charge does take him out to safety. And in the meantime, Excel getting a fight kicked off, and now they've turned everything around as Hillisang's been hooked, but the rest of him gets taken down. Another cash out for Patrick, but Fnatic are here to play. The knockback is there. Reckless going over the wall. Torrey instantly dead, but the Ornals is coming in now too. Patrick, how much more damage does he want to do? But keep fight for Excel. Cadrel smiting down, but who gets it in the end? It's going to be one more kill trying to come through. Expect stepping forward a bit more chaos here in the pit the renekton in the midst of everything and fanatic may have overstayed their welcome patrick gonna grab another one even gonna get it looks like it might be one more they're trying to finish him off the flash away back right back into reckless cajol has to keep his eyes up but it's not going to matter there comes the requiem and the shutdown for excel just like that coming out on top it's a massive fight Right there for Excel down in gold with their backs against the wall. It felt like the game was sort of slipping out of their hands, but Tori started off with a wonderful hook, sniping out on towards Re uh, Hillisang, rather. And of course, he does trade his life for it, but it means that Reckless enters in towards the pit, and later on, we'll actually see Rorse to flash out of it, because now you have Reckless, Nemesis, Selfmade, all sort of trapped here in the pit with a very divided situation. Notice Patrick able to interrupt. I believe Whippo's jump forward for the stun there on the Pantheon, so his influence was severely reduced. And the AoEs in the pit with the Renekton plus Karthus were enough to sort of clean up the backside of Fnatic. And you love to see the cash outs. The Draven no TP required. Here you go. Sorry, continue. <laughs> all, all I'll say is, Cajal's actually hit a ton of keys in these last few fights. I, wanna, I feel like we did him dirty on the top side, and I gotta say, solid team fight. He hit the R. The most important part of any car is players uh, role on the team. So, solid performance from Excel. I feel like despite the 2k deficit and being down two dragons, Excel are still very much in the game. Sadly, they're missing out on the opportunity to break plates here. But, but we're now on the chase. The side here comes off. Fnatic. Knockup's going to be there. Mickey looks like he's going to be the sacrificial forge god for the entire team. His effect's just going to run out of this one. Hill is saying though with the Swifties. He's got the Jordans on. He's trying to run him down. It's gonna be enough to play backwards. In fact now needs to turn this one, but it's gonna be incredibly difficult because Pantheon's now here as well. They pull him back. They knock him down. Alligator boots for everybody on Excel's side. Well for Excel, Fanatic group up and find the good fight. Excel getting a little bit scattered around the map right there and end up getting punished especially because like they had just put themselves right back into pretty even footing patrick with the shutdowns there it actually accelerated ahead in gold over reckless but whippo and crew continue to keep up the pressure and that's just sort of what you course in a fanatic game when things get messy that's when they know how to play they've been over for a year now so definitely being able to get down and dirty where excel usually find these mid-game fumbles that has plagued them all split long so difficult to watch too after what was a pretty solid fight around the Herald. 
overstaying on the bottom side of the map. We'll have to see if they can clean it up. Mid game's not over yet. Ender and fights are definitely not going to get e any easier. 35k to 31.3. And remember, for Fnatic, it's all about chasing. It's all about keeping up with Origin, staying even in that uh, fight for second place. They are tied 1-1. It's just fighting for playoffs. They need every win they can get. And remember, this is... I'm not going to say this is one of their easier match matchups. So if they're getting bopped here, they're still they're going to get bopped by Origin. They're going to get bopped by G2 as well. And that's not what you want to deal with. Yeah, of course, they got G2 tomorrow and OG next week. So uh, you'd, you'd rather get those ones faster sooner rather than later. Now, uh, off his Infinity Edge, of course, that will come a little bit sooner. Then Mickey will tick over to 14 and be upgrade uh, that into the Molten Edge for them. But they do have this Rift Herald. And can they break this? mid lane tower because leading into the cloud drake spawning that could set them up with the pressure needed to gain control of the river and the objective as well and look nine times out of ten i'm not worried about cloud team it's always going to feel good but now here comes the orn engage trying to zone the entire fanatic lineup off the tower but they burned a major cooldown they do not want to take a fight now that the orn alt is gone but suddenly on the back side he's waiting he's looking for patrick he wants to squish your target Fanatic taking their time gonna walk away with a single kill do not want to overcommit. still giving patrick expect the respect that they deserve Yep, they do get the tower, but now it's going to be soul point here for Fnatic side of things. Going to be able to man drop a little bit more frequently for Whippo up in the top lane. But especially if they do get that soul and the, the passive movement speed, I actually, like, I think it's really, really strong. Especially, like, a Cassiopeia being able to reposition in these fights. Going to be very, very difficult uh, for Excel's team. To, to deal with, and especially a Patrick or a Cajal who are sort of isolated in the back lines while the rest of the team is looking to dive in, go for hooks and whatnot. Like, those people, like, there's a reason off. It's a little bit for self-peel at this point in the game as well, where a lot of fights have taken place. He's just been trying to get away from Whippo diving in towards the backside, and that's just going to be much more difficult for them. And you got to give credit to self mid there on that cast because he just disengages the entire fight. Like, he knows that if the, those champions get into melee range, Mickey and Renekton on for expect, it's going to be a lot more difficult. And that's why I like, actually really love Gragas on this team comp because anytime the Orn hits a good alt, you just throw a Gragas cask out. You say, okay, we'll try again. Just reset the fight, take our time. We don't need to rush it. And in the meantime, you just send out some kite. W start poking up. Uh, it's hard to tell right now. She uh, could, of course, go into the Nasher's Tooth or into Crit Chance. So Reckless still maintains some flexibility on that build path, whether he wants to commit towards the, you know, the hard, heavy-hitting Qs or, or the uh, Sniper uh, setup with the W Max and the ability power of all there. But in, in the meantime, the rest of an attic looking very, very powerful with Nemesis finishing off uh, the upgraded Sarah. There's some Brace, Leandri's as well. Like, he's just going to cut through the front line of Excel that's just been stacking purely HP so far this game. It's going to be a similar case for Reckless as well. It's just very easy to burn down this entire line, especially with the passive coming through on the Kai'Sa. A few more Plasma stacks. We'll make these fights, especially if they go too long, very, very easy. We're just looking at Patrick, waiting for those big crits, waiting for that IE to come through. Maybe he can be the person to one or two shot the back line of Fnatic, but it's not going to be easy because even if Whippo is going to get outscaled by the Straven, he can still throw up the shield and buy his team four or five seconds on that front line. Yep. And in the meantime, Excel have to ask themselves, like, how do we even play the map at, at this point? Like, side lanes are going to be losing. Mid lane, Draven's not going to be able to control any sort of a minion wave. That's one of the weaknesses of the Draven pick. Barring his ultimate, he's going to be all single target, so whenever he faces off against Reckless inside of the wave, it's always going to be Fnatic getting that initial push, so Fnatic should maintain full control over the map. That means full control over the river and neutral objectives, and the ability to look for picks, too. Right. He can get caught up by the hook there, but obviously has the unstoppable, can walk away, so they're not going to give up too much. Looks like Reckless will be going for a bit of a split build here has the ad evolve and now it's looking to get the ap evolve as well the flash forward reckless is going to manage to make it out of that one it has to feel bad for tori but still the fight's going to get kicked off or not coming out excel have definitely stayed too long however they're going to walk away a few also worse for the wear yeah right now fanatic have a wave down bot side so i want to see nemesis go
or trying to tag team towards bot side. They both have TP, so they should be able to go for this duo push on this side of the map. And the rest of the Fnatic seem like they want to respond too and focus down here in case the fight were to break out. Pulling back up towards the mid lane. Come with this one quite yet, and I think good that Excel do not try to overcommit there. They, of course, do have the luxury of the Draven all the Whirling Death as well as the Card Assault, but not overstaying their welcome there in their own drum. Yeah, so I wonder from Fnatic, something uh, G2 did a lot last year actually, was have like one soul laner go into bot lane with the other one super close behind them and either get a kill and then push or just simply push towards those towers i think fanatic have a big enough lead at the moment that they can look for that type of play as long as they ports on their solo laners if they are fanatic or a team that don't necessarily love to play through their side lanes to close out a match they are by nature uh, a lot of that driven by Whippo or Hillisang initiating these fights, but I think it's always going to be a good option for them. And as I say that, Nemesis is just hiding in a bush waiting for Expect to step too far forward. He lands the initial poison, entire health bar. Expect just has to run for his life. <laughs> oh no. He can hope, he can pray that Cassio is going to walk into melee range. Just has to walk mm. away from that one. Yes, yeah, so like Nemesis obviously winning right there. This is actually one of the situations where I'm like, Rush. A, I just think it's like baseline super powerful on the Cassiopeia. Even if you can stack up Conqueror over time and it gives yes in an extended fight, I think she's always going to beat people 1v1. Like her DPS is always super, super high. So I'm a, a big fan of the utility that a phase rush can provide. Still, though, hey, get yourself a permanent phase rush by uh, picking for Nemesis. Also solid. Also, you know, if you just hit your Qs, you don't really need the X. But sometimes you do because you don't have boots. The point of the game. It's true. She's level 16. She's she's zooming. And now she has the cloud soul. So even more problems solved here. Fnatic take that one com just about completely uncontested. And right now it just feels like Accelerate to think that they, they know that they want to get a fight kicked off with Call of the Forge God. They obviously want to maximize the value on that card that's all lost. Yeah, maybe trying to set up for a pick here with Tor. Okay. Well, Affin on him. That was an interesting ult, wasn't it? And now Fnatic started off because Nemesis oh. The side, Tori's been caught out, a beautiful hook, Reckless now going right, and that damage is insane, Expect now caught in the middle of multiple members, they are going to walk away, Cable going down the ultimate, how much work can it do, what can it do to bring the team back to this fight, Whippo now going to back off, uses the invulnerability, uses the ability to block damage, has been taken away now, and Excel just backing out here under the tower, only one taken down on the side of the Fnatic for two on the side of Excel. Yeah, but... Importantly, Excel were able to eliminate self mage so that removes a lot of the barren possibilities here for Fnatic. Instead, they're just going to keep on pushing down towards this middle lane. Now, in theory, they can go back towards the Baron as long as they're willing to turn and commit for a fight. In which case, Excel should know this is being started up. Enter.
scared of, but it's just so easy for him to be CC that he actually cannot walk forward into this team. The only person he can approach is Reckless, and Reckless might be stronger now because they're zooming into bot lane. Spec buys a bit more time. This is a stopwatch there, but it's not going to be enough. The spear shot comes out, and Bupo's going to finish that kill. Suddenly, it's an exposed inhibitor, two exposed inhibitor. Nemesis is going to grab one down. Pantheon going to jump right in the middle of the team. Mickey Cage on the rest of Excel now trying to back off, but this has got to be it. They've got I mean, the Cloud Soul. Everything's in position to win. At some point, you just gotta say we're fighting now, Excel, because you've lost the Baron, you've lost the Drake Soul, you've lost three inhibitors, and you don't outscale either. So it's gotta come, and it's gotta come soon. Otherwise, Fnatic, one more push, they're gonna be able to close this one out. Like I said, Ultra Nightmare. Single hit, <laughs> single mistake. You instantly lose the game. You're just getting swarmed by a million enemies. It's like, how could anyone beat this? It's true. Double super minions in each wave. Oof. Good news is Patrick is going to be rolling in money. Bad news is he's also probably going to get one shot if he missteps at all. Because he has a Mikhail's from Torre. But Torre keeps dying at the start of every fight, which means he might not get the chance to use it. And it's going to be all on that, that dirty, dirty exhaust. Yeah, they find the Miracle Exhaust, but even then, this is enough to stop the inhibitor from going down. Reckless with a nice little swoop de doop in the bot lane for the kill, but mid lane fight breaking out. Speaking of swoop de doops Reckless swooping in on Expect. Nothing the little crocodile can do. He was viable from early to mid game, but it's 30 minutes now, and it's Kaisa time. Look, that was all dupe, no swoop. Fnatic now, <laughs> ready to close this one out. Walking in. Bopo going to take a bit of a poke here, but has the Aegis Assault can just back off, mitigate some of that damage. He's going to get the sidestep on the hook there. Patrick definitely has to be very careful. Cast comes out and they've isolated the Draven. They're now going to run face first into it, but they have to be careful. By a bit more time. Or an ulti has now been used. So while they've saved the Draven, their base is now in shambles. Fnatic now walking in the flash forward from Nemesis to try to have some fun with it. Cage going to die in the midst of the enemy team. How many Skittles can he hit? Not even going to try for it. Goes for the ult. Maybe. Just maybe. Excel can try to get it done. The flash forward from Hillisang. The hook goes wide. It's not what they needed, but Reckless right in the back line. The exhaust is there, but it's too little. Too late. He needed it 15 minutes ago. It's not going to be enough. Fnatic walk down the lane and end the game. Ooh, baby, Fnatic get another win on the board right here. You know, it started off slow for Fnatic. We weren't able to get a whole lot done in the early game, but in true Fnatic fashion, the first TP came down by a Bwipo, and then he just kept forcing the issue over and over again, making the game uh, look pretty easy. When I look back on it, Excel, Excel had that one really solid fight, I thought. It went real.